This is Jay Michaels, and here we are bringing you some fantastic television courtesy of the Boston Sci-Fi Film Festival. Now, this is Boston Sci-Fi Film Festival 49. Now, I failed math in college, but I still know that 49 is followed by the Flight 250. So this festival is a celebration of brilliant filmmakers who've given us cautionary and powerful parable tales utilizing the genre of science fiction and maybe even some horror mixed in there. But also this is moving toward the 50th anniversary next year. ACW TV is proud to be part of the Boston Sci-Fi Film Festival and we're thrilled to be able to feature some of these powerful filmmakers. And we're gonna hear a little bit more about them. To learn about them, go to bostonsci-fi.com and this way you'll know the schedule for your films and everything like that. Let's start at the top on my list. Liam, Liam, tell me about the powerhouse film that you have opening at the Sci-Fi Festival. Hello, uh, lovely to be here. Uh, thanks very much for having me. Um, so I am the director for The Crowd. Uh, it's just a, a short sci-fi film uh, and it was made for the Sci-Fi uh, London 40 Hour Film Challenge, which is an annual challenge we have here in London. Uh, and basically that challenge tasks filmmakers uh, to create a film within two days and they give you a random line of dialogue a title and a prop and then they just say go forth write a script edit uh, write a script shoot it edit it and submit it within uh, a two-day period so over the course of a weekend um, you're kidding yeah <laughs> it was it was an intense it was an intense one and it was actually my first uh, it was my first step into the world of sci-fi so i'm absolutely uh, over the moon that is uh, it's been accepted into the festival and it is done so well uh, it's uh, beyond any scope that i had imagined for it that explains it ladies and gentlemen before i before i i turned on the cameras liam said uh, uh, how many entries were there in this film festival and I was like, well, why do you need to know? <laughs> it's because it took him 48 hours to do his movie and he got into this. OK, tell us about the movie. Um, so the film, basically, uh, we came up with the script. It, it was a full day, basically a, a day of production and script writing and then a day to actually shoot it. We didn't actually have the script ready until about 12, uh, you know, midnight the day before the actual shoot. So it was a proper uh, running around, getting all the team together and stuff. We had a team of writers and we went back and forth about that idea a lot of times. But we basically settled on an idea, which is like a take on the Alan Turing test, uh, sort of that classic sci-fi trope of asking an AI or a robot a bunch of questions and uh, um, and just kind of seeing their response. And just we took that idea and sort of ran with it. And and sort of it, the way that the story goes, it gets a bit it gets a bit crazy. The, uh, the it doesn't go to plan in this uh, little experiment. And uh, yeah, uh, and it was uh, an interesting idea to work with in 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 under uh, forty eight hours, basically. But it turned out uh, it turned out pretty well, and it was uh, one of our more kind of deeper, uh, a much deeper story than we thought we'd come up with in such a short space of time. That's really brilliant, and you're hitting something very important. You're hitting a a a, a, a sore spot these days. What's your feelings on AI? AI, it's it's really it's scary. Um, I I myself in my day job am an editor, uh, so and I've seen videos I've seen videos about how AI can start to mimic editing styles and that kind of thing. So with a job that I thought was safe, uh, I'm 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 trying to make myself as valuable as possible. Um, but yeah, it's just it's insane what like how these like Chat GPT and this kind of thing being able to knock out scripts and that kind of thing. Um, and I think it's it's playing a bigger role in the industry at the minute. And I think the only thing that's kind of that kind of give, giving us an edge is that it it can't it, it can mimic and replicate, but it can't kind of come up with um, you know ori more original ideas and that kind of thing. So that's where I think we have the edge. But it's interesting to see how it's developing, and a little bit scared of the future. But <laughs> as long as we keep them happy, the robots happy, then uh, um, I'm all good. Keeping the robots happy. Okay, I, I, I hear this everywhere, and this is one of the few audiences that I can ask this without someone smirking at me. Sure. Are we looking at the dawn of Terminator? Is one day Skynet going to be a reality, do you think? I mean, it's... See, oh, just before you answer, I'm seeing every head here go, yeah, that's that, okay. Well, I've just seen I've I've seen videos of defense, you know, AI controlled defense systems and stuff. What popped up on like TikTok, where like there's there's a gun trained on like a passenger jet and be and it's clearly thinking, is this the right thing to shoot? And so um, I think there's that's why I'm saying I'm on the side of the robots. I am. I will be your slave. Don't worry. <laughs> Not to sell us all out. If if they don't win, then I'm I'm all for I'm all for team humanity. I'm convinced that my Roomba hates me. 
So, <laughs> so, okay. I, I, I see I have a kindred spirit with that. Okay. Uh, mechanic overlords, please, whatever I can do. Uh, wow. When, when, do, when does the film happen? When, when's your performance? Do you know? Um, what, within the actual uh, festival itself? Yes. I think it's on the Friday. I think it's actually on the first day of the festival. Um, I, I believe I'd have to double check this. I'd have to double check the schedule. But I think we're on the first day. Yeah, yeah. I'm just getting a, a, a nod from my producer partner. <laughs> just like yes, the first day of the of the festival. So it's one of the opening of the festival. Excellent, excellent, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Look for this film and think deeply the next time you don't like your calculator. <laughs> yeah, of course. Really excellent. I wish you so much luck and congratulations. Forty eight hours. You're given these materials and you've turned in a film that is now within festivals. This really says something about you and your team as filmmakers and as 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 people with imagination. So good for you. Congratulations. Thanks so much. Looking forward to hearing more and, and looking forward to still having a job after the the overlords decide that they could interview people better than me. OK, Jesse, tell us about your film. Hi, my name's Jesse Pickett, and I'm located in Vancouver, BC, and I made a short speculative fiction film called Reformat, and it was funded by the BC Art Council, so shout out to the BC Art Council, and it's about, it's also about AI, it's a very different story though, it is about an AI youth who's found deceased on school grounds, and the investigation into the last seven people who interacted with the AI, and it's about the complexities of being a teenager with the integration of AI into the public school system. And so, so the AI is, for lack of a better term, a living being in, in your film. Yeah, and they're advanced study partners. So they, it's sort of supposed to be a mutually beneficial situation where AI are really advanced study partners for humans, but then the AI are learning about human emotion from the teenage students, the human students. So the AIs are learning about emotion from individuals who are now finally figuring out their emotion or the on the onset of their emotion. Yes, that's right. Yeah. What it's made all... you think of that? What 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 inspired you to think of that? Uh, I think just a lot of thinking about the complexities of finding your identity, especially as like an adolescent, and then thinking about how that's going to change over time with the integration of AI. It's probably already somewhat complex with social media and the early uh, chat GPT AI that they're interacting with and navigating. So just all just lots of self reflection about finding your finding yourself. I, I uh, my, my, the hairs on my back of my neck are standing up because I get an idea that we have a parable about cyberbullying somewhere. If, if we yeah. dig deep, we're looking at cyberbullying from a from a, a really fantastical point of view. You 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 you're proving my point when I say that that all science fiction horror any any of this genre there's a cautionary tale underneath it that we really need to pay attention to. We we shouldn't look at it and say, "Oh, look, it's a nice popcorn movie." No, there's 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 something really powerful underneath that. Wow. That's great. When when, it, when is it happening? Uh, it's happening at the on the sixteenth at eight. The sixteenth is what day of the week? Do you know? It's a uh, Friday. Friday at eight. Oh, there must be some AI who's on your side to make sure you have such an excellent time slot. That's <laughs> great. I wish you all the best. Congratulations. That's a brilliant thought process that you have with this movie. And I'm seeing two AIs in front of me. Okay, now I'm getting extra nervous. Eric, tell me there's no AI in your movie. I wish I could tell you that, but I can't. Tell me about your movie. My movie is called Hold You So Tight. It is a science fiction folktale, and it stars Charisma Carpenter and Christina Wong. And it's about? The movie is about a woman who is having a horrible teletherapy session over her phone, which is how we have therapy these days, and... She's at the end of her rope emotionally and psychologically, and the anxiety is rising, and she's about to go into a motel room where a friend of hers has told you told her about a procedure that frees you from the burdens of this world. She doesn't know until she enters the motel room that the procedure involves a hug from a homemade robot. 
Those hairs are still standing up. Wow. Wow. How did this come up? What was the inspiration? Whose genius was this? Well, I've produced a lot of unscripted TV in my life, and I was working in 2017 on a Ridley Scott pilot that never made it to air, and it was about AI versus humans. So this was, in his mind, back six years ago. And so I made a, an acquaintance with a robot on set. And I said, that robot's a movie star. Does anybody else, nobody see? It was like being in a room with Margot Robbie or Eddie Murphy. It was clear to me that this was something that was special. And I wrote a feature and it got some uh, attention, but nobody wanted to make it. So then I thought, well, if you want people to feel what being in the presence of this robot feels like, you better make something yourself. So that's what we did. Wow. Good for you. Good for you. Wow, that's that's a really fascinating thing. And you you bring up something. You you, you hit me where I live. Uh, not long ago, I had a, a, a tele appointment with a doctor for something. My doctor wasn't available, so the machine that answered my email put me in touch with uh, another doctor to to talk to me online. The doctor had no idea what who i was or what uh or what i was ailing and at one point he's typing and i asked do you need any information on me he says no i'm going into google right now and i thought okay i'm in the twilight zone right now i just want to find out if i have a cold and i'm in the twilight zone you're hitting something really powerful with the teletherapy session and a hug from a robot there you go now we got to go see and everyone again is going oh yeah oh yeah there's something interesting with that if we want to play parable the hug could be a, a a euphemistic hug that we're all being we're all being strangled in some way. Good for you. Wh- when is it happening? When is the film going? We are premiering. This is our world premiere at this festival, and we are on Valentine's Day, Friday night at eight o'clock. We close out the block that we're in, and we're thrilled. That's right, folks. For Valentine's Day, get a hug with a robot. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. I wish you a lot of luck. That's That really sounds fascinating. I, I can't wait to hear what, what happens with that. And I can't wait to feel the chills down everyone's spine after they see your film. Joe, are you going to chill me? Are you going to give me yet a fourth AI? No, I, I don't think so. Um, so mine is, uh, my film is a, is a dark sci-fi comedy called Speed Man. Um, it takes place in a very absurd, weird world. It's uh, it's an origin story about a supervillain who was created to save his world from an incoming alien invasion. Um, it's uh, an animated film. Uh, it's the, the world is actually, it's a world inhabited by these platypus people and an invasion is coming from one-eyed tentacle creatures. So it is, it's definitely suited for animation. It's uh, meant to be like the Saturday morning cartoons of the late 80s, early 90s. So heavily inspired tonally, stylistically by Ninja Turtles or Garbage Pail Kids. So that's where we're at tonally. Um, Maybe a little bit more mature, a little bit more violent, but still kind of in that ballpark. I remember I remember it, it must be it must be the early 90s. I was I was at home and the TV was on and and Saturday morning cartoons were going and there was Mighty Mouse and they did a send up of Star Trek in that episode. And I remember stopping what I was doing and watching it, just going, this is not for kids. This is not <laughs> for kids. I'm thrilled to hear that. Why a supervillain? Did you say a supervillain is tasked to? Yeah, to- yeah. Oh, so why? Was, so. Initially, it's something me and my friend Howard have been coming up with since we were kids, hence the Saturday morning cartoon influence. And we wanted to make this superhero series in this weird world. It's super weird because we were young and weird drawing these characters, doing a world building. And we started, we ended up making the origin story of the super villain that has an influence through the rest of the series. So that's kind of like a pilot for a, a longer story. So. You're, you're hitting something very interesting. I, I picked up on that because we're in a world now where we don't have superheroes. Yeah, we do have superheroes, but they're super flawed. Stan Lee was onto something in the 1960s when he made every Marvel superhero neurotic. Yeah. Uh, and and I think it's really great that the supervillain is the one that that needs to be relied upon. It shows that that 
there's no such thing as 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 good and evil, but something in between that all of us have have something in between that we have to push a demon aside to find that angel and vice versa. So that's a really interesting thing you have going on there. When when uh, when does it happen? Uh, I believe it's going to be on Saturday. Saturday sure what time? I have to I have to check. I believe it's Saturday though. Yeah, you probably of course it's it's animation. Yeah. It's it's of course it's going to be the Saturday morning cartoon. When's oh yeah, it? exactly. I didn't even think about that, but that's perfect. Yeah, so there you go. Perfect. Okay, great. If you're looking for cartoons, ladies and gentlemen, Saturday morning is still the place to find them. Good luck to you. I I I want to hear what happens there. I've always I've always liked the villain more than the hero. Sometimes, so so I I'm I'm rooting for your star. Let's just put it that way. Good right, for you. Okay. Kelly, Kelly, tell me all about what you have. Hi, um, I'm Kelly. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored. Um, so my short is called Beacon. Uh, it is a horror sci-fi short. Um, it is about, well, first it was uh, made with uh, AMC content rooms. Uh, they did a thing where the conceit was, okay, we're going to live stream the actual shooting and like creation of these shorts. So like, the average person can see like, what is it like to make a horror short? Um, so uh, yeah, a Beacon is about an android discovers an abandoned space station um, and explores it and kind of learns that it's not abandoned. There are people on it. They have perished. How did they perish? How is the robot connected to all of this? Uh, and kind of like the ghostly remnants of um, of what happened on this space station. Um, yeah, I think <laughs> I was kind of like, okay, first I was fresh off a divorce, okay? And I was not well. And I was like, I can't go to therapy anymore because I can't afford it. So I'll just make a short about what if someone is uh, purely their own ambition, because that is something that I've struggled with and, and was actually kind of an issue with, you know, with my uh, past relationships. And um, yeah, kind of wrote myself as the uh, as the main character and did play her and then uh, punished her throughout um, an entire short. Punished her. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I guess a theme in everything I write and make is like, how can I make things the absolute worst for this specific person? Oh, interesting. So there's a therapy session that you're going through. And with, maybe one right now. <laughs> there you are. Um, you're you're hitting an interesting parable. There, there's the joke we always say, and in the in the seventies and eighties, none of you are around then. So let me inform you. In the seventies and eighties, uh, uh, it seems I refuse to believe it. Uh, the uh, the apocalypse. When we're all done, the only surviving creatures are going to be the cockroaches. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I don't think that's the case anymore. I think they're going to be wiped out too. And I think it's going to be a mechanized individual that's going to find our bleached bones on a barren surface. So you're hitting you're hitting the 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 current philosophy on what do we do if we keep going in the direction we're going? And yeah, and it's really interesting that it's spawned from a change of your life where you said, okay, yeah. I, 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 if we look at Tarot almost, it's like you drew the tower. Yeah, said, it's now time to to topple this and let's see what's ahead. And you've done it in a really fascinating science fiction way. Thank and it's you. Yeah. My horror. Thank you. Thank you. I love my horror movies. I love my horror movies. Good for you. Oh, that's great. When when does it happen? Thursday at eight. Eight o'clock. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. The prime time spot. Beautiful. Good. I wish you a lot of luck. Can't wait to hear Thanks. what happens. And and may you stop punishing your characters? No, I, I can't stop. <laughs> I'll cease to exist. Well, there you go. There you go. Well, maybe you should get the online therapy session that 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 Eric was talking about in his in his film. But but let let's not go there. Let's instead go to Ryan. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, my beard has been beaten by another beard. And and so Ryan and he's in a suit and tie. I'm honored. Ryan, tell me about your film. Oh, thank you. No, I, I am honored. Yeah. Especially hearing all you guys talk about your movies. Uh, so, so mine is called the jump. My wife and I uh, worked on it together as our first film. And uh, one night I, I, you know, it's been kind of a dream. And I said, I, I want to, let's, let's do this. We have more time like everybody in the world during lockdown. I'm like, let's, let's do it. And she said, yeah, let's do it. Go for it. 
And I said, yeah, maybe like a little eight minute short or something. Um, it turned into 45 minutes uh, with her help because she edited the film and she actually helped really solidify what it was. But it's based on, um, it's, so the story is a father son story. Uh, there's no AI, I don't believe uh, in the text, but it's, it's basically a boy who lost his dad at a young age. His father is a quantum physicist who disappears mysteriously. And then this boy is left like any child or even when you don't lose your parent, wondering, have a, do I have his approval? Who is he anyways? And I want to live up to what I think he wants me to be. Spends his life doing that and finds himself in a unique opportunity where he's in a competition with somebody else to maybe get a chance to go back and reconnect via time travel, the other AI of uh, science fiction. Indeed. Indeed. You're, you're hitting me where I live. Um, I lost my father well over 20 years ago. Mm. And whenever something happens in my life, I, I always, there's that, it, whether it's one moment or I ruminate, but I think to myself, what would my dad think? What mm. would he feel about this? Uh, or, or sometimes I'll go back and I'll say, oh, if only my dad did this or something. There's always that one moment. So you're hitting something very strong in a lot of us, I'm sure, whether it's a parent or, or anything there, or, or, uh, uh, your your mother, your father, even even a loved one. I I have a, a dear friend who just lost his wife, and every day he's reliving something in his head and saying, "Well, what what did we do then?" and all of that. So you're you're yeah. hitting something very deep in all of us. Wow, that's what it is. Yeah. But, uh, what wh why 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 did why did yeah. this come to you? Yeah, good good question. Um, right around that time, I had been so I'm I'm from California, but I moved to New York. Uh, at that point, twenty five years had passed. So I was about to hit twenty five years. And it just hit me one night. I'm like, man, a quarter century. And my, my parents are still alive and I, I'm very close with them, but they're still on the West Coast. And I was just like, wow, what, what did I actually give up? Like, what is 25 years of being near them? I could hang out on weekends and instead of just one time a year. And I just, man, it hit me deep. And I just, uh, just started thinking about that. And that's where I started. And I just thought about a father and a son because the characters in this film are the father and son throughout and separated and just yeah, the desire to kind of have a second chance to have a relationship or a closer one than maybe what you got to have. That's great. You, uh, I commend you. I commend you all on, on one level or another, but in this case, it's like something deep inside of you. You said, what do I do for this? Do I go to therapy? Do I watch TV? Do I ignore it? No, it's now time to create a parable so I can share it with others and maybe help others in doing so. Bravo. That's it. Bravo. When does it happen? It's going to be Saturday at 6 p.m. Yeah, it leads off a, a, a block of four short films. So, yeah, it's a great honor to be there. Perfect. Perfect. That's 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 the pre dinner. That's the pre dinner hour. So everyone can watch these films and then go to dinner at one of the lovely restaurants near near the Somerville and, and talk about the ramifications of the films. Uh, really great. Really great. Best of luck to you. Really powerful topic. And I know when when I turn off the cameras, I'm going to be thinking about my father because of this so thank you so much uh martin your film is called infection ground zero is because that's all over your nameplate there so <laughs> tell us about your movie hey jay thank you for having me on and thank you for boston sci-fi it's uh it's quite exciting to be part of it um basically my film came about when uh i wrote during lockdown um my I, my friend runs a, a podcast called the Filmmakers Podcast, and one of his one of his uh, mantras during the lockdown was if uh, if you've ever wanted to do something and you uh, and you said you haven't got time, well now in, being in the arts we haven't got that excuse anymore. So if you're going to do it, do it now or never say it again. So uh, I got down and started writing and wrote this short, um, and basically started thinking I'd make it in the house and just do a little, me and my wife do it just to keep us busy. And then it grew and grew and grew. And it turned into a two day shoot, um, which we filmed the week end before the end of lockdown. It should have been uh, just after lockdown, but they expanded lockdown just by an extra week. So we did it in the last weekend. And um, it was self-funded. Uh, it was my sort of film school, my first film I've ever written and I directed, I uh, edited it and started it and designed it and uh, color corrected it. And I thought this, if I'm gonna learn filmmaking, just make a short film, this is how it is. Um, my, I've got, I love Back to the Future. So another time travel film, um, no AI in this one. We, we didn't do any AI, but um, yeah, so we had real fun making 
uh, this this over two days. Obviously, time travel is involved, so there was there was points where I had to be younger and slightly older. Not nothing massive, but little bits, just little right. tweaks. Um, and then just filled it with my mates, got my friends. I've been in the industry a long time, uh, not in not in the filmmaking side of things, more of theatre. Uh, so I just basically called a load of friends and said, "Do you want to be involved?" And they was like, "Yeah." Let's come do it. So we've got a few few people in there that are really, really fun and uh, just a really good bunch of people all in one place, just trying to make something fun. Um, Give us so the plot kind of, what's, what's it about? So basically, uh, two agents get set back in time to stop a pandemic that devastates their world. Uh, if they succeed, their world kind of changes and they lose everything. But then also they gain, they know that their lives would be enriched with if it does change. So they change their timeline for their past selves, although they're not sure whether their future will be actually exist if they go back. Uh, there's lots of nods to Back to the Future in it as well, so there's, there's, you'll, you'll notice a few of those in there as well. We, we, all, we always say, oh, if I can only turn back time, but that is probably the most difficult thing, and I don't mean it technically. I just sure. mean one little move. Talk about the butterfly effect. One little yeah. move. And and yeah. everything changes. I remember an Outer Limits episode where where uh, someone went back in time and and, and ended up not existing. And sure. and there's so many others. There was a film I can't remember the name of it, but someone went back in time to save President Kennedy and ended up starting World War Three. So sure. there's so much when you say I want to go back in time. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I I want to congratulate you uh, when years and years ago when someone would say, oh, I'm the actor, writer, director, producer, uh, star, <laughs> and I got the pizza for everybody on Thursday, and then <laughs> I paid it. for it on Friday, uh, people would say, oh, well, and it would be called a vanity project or, or whatever. Not anymore. Not anymore. It really now shows brilliance. It shows how resourceful one can be as an artist and how they can make things happen. And thank you. There were so many people who, when the pandemic happened, they invested in potato chips and and instead <laughs> instead individuals like all of you said no now it's time to to give a message so that this could be the last pandemic uh really brilliant good for you when does it happen when uh, when is your it, film ha it happens on thursday at the 3 p.m slot at the summerville thursday 3 p.m oh that's an interesting slot okay uh i haven't had anyone in that slot yet is yours a, a full length or a short it's only a short, it's a 10 minute exactly. Uh, and it's, so, but it's like a, um, I would say it's more of a family, family based. So it's not, uh, it's not horror or anything like that. So it's the worst thing is it, I think I say, I'm, I think I say bollocks and that's about it. That's the worst it gets. Um, <laughs> and since on, on this side of the pond, we don't even know what bollocks is. So there's, oh. there's no cuss words in that. Uh, okay. Unless you watch BBC television like I do. Um, <laughs> okay, that that's why you're in the family friendly slot. Okay, got it. <laughs> I wish you the best with this. Congratulations. Do it again. Don't wait for a pandemic to just let your mind explode with other ideas. Good for you. Thank you. Thank uh, you very much. Uh, Moenajati? I know I pronounced it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there. It's Mo Moenajati. Oh, it's two words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, the space bar. Yeah. For old eyes yeah, like mine, my the bad. space bar. That's my bad. No, that's okay, my bad. <laughs> Mo, tell me about your movie. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, yes, my name is Mona Jati. I'm uh, I'm based in London. I'm a filmmaker based in London. I'm currently in Dubai, so it's midnight for me. So uh, bear with me if I'm a bit uh, slower than average, but uh, I should be fine. <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, my film is called Insold. It's a short sci-fi slash mystery. There is an, a, a slight element of horror and a slight element of romance in it. Um, it basically follows this woman who's basically going on a journey to join her partner in the afterlife she goes into this organization that offers assisted suicide and she meets a man there who has lost his daughter and they connect for a minute and then obviously a twist happens and things go wrong um and yeah that's pretty much it i don't want to give too much away but i think that's pretty sums it up a little bit so yeah you're you're very interesting there. You mix two very powerful thought processes here. When when one talks about suicide, it's it's a sin, period. There, uh, everyone says suicide is a sin, even assisted suicide. That's still the jury's out on that philosophy. Uh, but then you're saying to join in the afterlife, a very religious thought that you're going to another world. So you're combining the. You're basically looking at religion and saying, oh yeah, 
and, and, and making us think about that. That's really interesting. Where, where did the inspiration come from? Well, there's a bit of, there's also an element of AI, of course, like everything else and, and, and robots in it. <laughs> um, I, I would say the inspiration came from, you know, a lot of things, a lot of layers and sort of, I wrote this idea, I co-wrote it actually over like three, four years. So I guess every year you get inspired by something and it just evolves and then you add another layer. But for me, I remember this, I was shooting a documentary in Japan in 2014 and Part of that documentary was filming with Asimo, which was the robot of the time. It was like the most advanced robot made by Honda in 2014. Um, it's pretty basic now if you look at it for our days. But um, while I was filming, I felt pretty uneasy. So it wasn't a good feeling like uh, I heard earlier from one of the filmmakers. For me, I felt actually a bit sick. And I wasn't sure what happened. You know, it was, yeah. And I only felt better when I sort of finished filming and I was away from the robot and sort of research and turned out it's something called the uncanny valley where you sort of, your mind doesn't process this machine that's acting like a human. So you sort of feel your mind doesn't process it well and you start to feel sick. Um, and I think that's mainly where it came in because it started as a sort of a drama and then the sci-fi element came in and and I think that's the, yeah, that's one of those inspirational moments that sort of stuck with me. And yeah, so yeah, it's probably somewhere there. There's there's the other subtle message in there. We talk about AI and some people say how brilliant it is and it's helping us, blah, blah, blah. But in the end, AI does not have a queasy feeling. Uh, no. <laughs> in the end, you're not ever going to get AI to say, I don't know, I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> not Well, once they do, that's it. Okay, I'm moving to Florida. But anyway, uh, it, it's... You're really, you're really pointing out something very interesting, even in in the inspiration of it, in terms of of AI and and humanity. Uh, you're you're picking religion, you're picking thought process, you're picking medical when you get down to it, and now you're picking AI and our thought on technology. Well, that's that's a mouthful. This is a short film. Yeah, that was a challenge. <laughs> All this in a short period of time. Wow, yeah. Yeah. good for you. When does it happen? Uh, Wednesday, so the first day of the festival at 8 p.m. Well, may no one have a queasy feeling when they watch your film. They may, <laughs> may they so. rise to their feet as it's for its brilliance. So congratulations and good luck to you with that. Thank um, you. Uh, Mor Mortez. Hello, hello, Jay. Hello, did I pronounce your name correctly? Morteza. Uh, Morteza. Oh, well, there you go. Maybe I should look at the whole name then when I, so I could see all of it. Morteza, tell us about your movie. No problem. Um, another AI, AI based film about AI. Um, I'll just read what, what it's about. It says, um, so what's, which are equipped with artificial intelligence and they roam the post-apocalyptic world looking for humans to give them their purpose. So, so this one is more about, it's not about how we, it's not about humans anymore in this one. It's more about just the AI itself and where humans are not around anymore. So I just wanted to explore that and see where they end up. So I just made a short film about it. The maturation of AI. Is this what I'm hearing? Yes. So, so where are they going to go? Because in my, in my story, all the humans are kind of dead. So, but robots, because they get energy, they can get the energy from the sun. They'll live on. So what are they going to make out of themselves? Or are they going to make anything out of themselves? Or, or yeah, so that was the story for, for this one. Talk about queasy feeling. Wow. It, 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 a, a, a moment ago when I said, okay, they're never going to, they're never going to say I got a bad feeling about this. You're saying they might. Wow. Yeah. Well, yes, because they, in um, like uh, in this one, they, they come out as blank. Because they're, they're not going to have their own um, purposes, I guess. They're, they'll probably have like programs by people. But then when people aren't around anymore, then they would be like, so what's my program? Um, or so I try to give them like, uh, I try to compare them to humans because us as humans, we also try to find a purpose. So then in this one, I'm like, so what if we give them that same uh, like um, mission to find their own purpose? Or maybe they, you know, eventually they find their purpose or maybe they think that do we they start thinking to themselves that do we need a purpose or do we just find beauty in life kind of thing um anyway i had a lot of questions which i tried to put in that story and see what they what the story goes i guess you're giving us a very spiritual uh concept again because 
don't we do that? We look skyward and say, okay, why am I here? And we're hoping for an answer and we pray and we think and we study and whatever to try to find it. And, and maybe we're successful or maybe we just think we're successful. So you're saying even AI at some point or another is going to, to say, who am I? Wow. Yeah, probably, especially when we're going to cease to exist, humans. So if, when, if when does this happen? When, when does this film happen? Um, I actually don't know. I think um, it's my film is not in the program list at the moment, so it might be in the other, like in the online sessions or in the, in the virtual. <laughs> of course, it's in the virtual. Um, that's great. Okay, so uh, give us the name again so we can look for it in the virtual lineup. Uh, it's called a robot's dream. A robot's dream, folks. Look for. Uh, if you wonder what your purpose is, realize that even our mechanized friends are asking the same question. Check out A Robot's Dream on the virtual sci-fi network. That's great. Good luck to you. Uh, a brilliant concept. Again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed when things such as spirituality come into science fiction, because we think, you know, you know, technology, we take technology and we bring it into, into the, the genre. But no, let's let's bring spirituality into the genre and see what we get. Wow, good for you, good for you, James. You have been nodding throughout this whole thing. You have been listening to every word. I think you're <laughs> writing a master's thesis on something here. That's why. Tell us about your film. Uh, well, first, I've been nodding along because these are all brilliant. You guys are great. I'm just I'm I count myself lucky to be you know amongst you guys. Um, and special shout out to Ryan. Uh, I actually lost my father during the making of the film that I'm going to be talking about. So I couldn't go see him because I was in the edit room. So, you know, I'm sitting here tearing up and trying not to let the snot run into my beard while uh, while you're telling the story. So, um, yeah, uh, pretty excited. Jay, nice to meet you. And thanks to Boston Sci-Fi. Like, this is, this is great. I've been familiar with Boston Sci-Fi for a number of years, and I'm excited to be a part of it. Uh, my film's Crypto Shadows has nothing to do with AI. Uh, it's about cryptocurrency. And really, it's an exploration of uh, the complexities of work-related trauma and exploring that in a unique sci-fi way. So uh, it's only got one character on screen. Uh, there's several dialogues that happen over Zoom and Discord and, and stuff, but we only ever see one character. Uh, and we, we set out, our mission with this film was to try to bring the audience on the ride of the character so um, we do a lot to make sure that the audience is unsure of what's happening to her is real or just in her head. So it's it's pretty fun. It's uh, we call it a, a techno thriller, but it's really like a psychological thriller. Um, and, and we wanted to bring focus to the idea of work related trauma and just how much damage it can do, especially since when we get hurt, especially emotionally and mentally, we tend to want to self isolate. And so our character self-isolates into the remote foothills of Central California, and her reality spins out of control. So I won't spoil it and tell you what the ending is, but it's got a really cool, unique uh, sci-fi twist ending that that I think is very satisfying. Of course it does. Of course it does. That's what makes it sci-fi. Uh, okay. How does cryptocurrency come into this? So um, it, the idea is that our our protagonist finds a, a embedded out. Uh, message in cryptocurrency and discovers that much like the SETI at home project, uh, cryptocurrency is just a the cover for crowdsourcing the decryption of really big files received from space. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, cryptocurrency, sorry. Don't understand it. Can't figure it out. I'm I'm still I'm still fascinated by the fact I can tap my credit card against something and they take money out and they don't even have to touch my credit card. So don't get me started on cryptocurrency. And you're taking it from some really fascinating angle. Workplace trauma. And it's interesting you say it's all in our heads. So you're talking about an industry that is really in our heads and yeah. and the damage that it's doing. Um really intense i'm sorry to hear about your dad i really am uh, it, it's, he, it's fun he's somewhere right now very proud i'll say that much uh, yeah i i was hoping he'd get to see the film um but uh you know hopefully he's watching 
somewhere else. But uh, I, I was going to say, as long as we have all these spiritual outlooks in this, he's watching it. He's watching yeah. it, and he's very proud. Yeah. Very no one proud. understands cryptocurrency. That's why we we added a cool little layer to it. So, oh, no one. Un good. I thought I was the only one. Good. 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 Um, when does it happen? When does your film happen? Uh, Friday at six. Friday at six. Oh, excellent time slot. Excellent time slot. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, you can pay for your ticket with cryptocurrency. Anyway, uh, I don't know if you can. I was just trying to be funny. Chris Brown, tell me all about your film. Hey there. Thanks for having me, by the way. This is super awesome hearing all the people's work. Uh, okay, so my film is called Pleroma. It's a thriller about a corporation led by machines. And uh, the machines, when they turn on their human workers, it's up to the discarded prototype to bust in and save the day. Thank you. <laughs> I see the parable right there. And I think that's absolutely Marvelous. What inspired you? You're a young guy. What inspired you to think of it that to think of this plot? Well, I was inspired. First, I was inspired by just a lot of the uh, corrupt uh, corporations that are coming out into the media, like Theranos with Elizabeth Holmes or the FTX scandal. And I was just thinking, what if you have a corporation, this sort of corrupt corporation that what if their core business was building dangerous robotics? And what if they had access to an AI super intelligence and how that could just completely run amok. And it's often the, the one employee, the individual who's the whistleblower that kind of helps expose this or sort of corrects the wrongs in a lot of ways. So I took that and said, okay, what if it's this lowly uh, individual sort of worker who builds his own machine that gets discarded and has no interest in the company that comes back and actually saves the day. You're you're very Rod Serling in your outlook in terms of that. So I give you a lot of credit for that. I think that's that's really fascinating. Uh, uh, and and I I hear all the time when someone talks about AI, when someone talks about so many different technological things, there's the throwaway line that they give. I, I hear in interviews all the time, someone says, oh yeah, well, one day it'll be done for evil, but in the meanwhile, and then they go on with what they're saying. And we've gotten so used to the fact that something somewhere is gonna become nefarious. So I'm, I'm so glad you're, you, you, you've stepped into that and you said, okay, let's, let's, let's fix that. Uh, mm -hmm. Really excellent. When does your film happen? Uh, Thursday at 8 p.m. Thursday at 8, excellent slot. There you go, prime time. Prime time. Good for you. Much luck. Look look forward to hearing what happens with it. And Hayden, tell me all about your film. Hey there, and hello from New Zealand. Um, our film is called Bostrom Scenario. So it is a film that really delves deep into philosophy and the works of Nick Bostrom and um, his theories around superintelligence. So it follows a young girl named who is born in the loss of her older brother, but no one knows he even exists in every family. And her school advances and Where did you get the inspiration for that? Because <laughs> So our director, Ricky, I'm the producer on Ricky and Fort couldn't be here today. Um, our he is a film student. He is a production team that produces every one of the philosophy is around being an idea that is the was big ideas in the sci-fi realm. So we put together this idea of um, steering around younger people and a big broad around philosophy um, that we be in this film after. When does it happen? When does your film go up? Actually, actually, part of the. Um, and, yeah. 
it's very very exciting the bottom side for being able um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure if you got every word. Uh, uh, Hayden, I lost a little bit. I have a feeling your Wi-Fi or mine, uh, some AI somewhere does not want me to know all about your film. So we lost a little bit of it there. So I'm repeating the name of this film. Ladies and gentlemen, go online and find out about the Bostrom scenario from Hayden all the way from New Zealand. That's probably part of it, that poor Wi-Fi had such a way to travel. Uh, and and find out more about this film, Hayden. Thank you very much uh, uh, for joining us with that. That is, I, I wish you luck uh, with the film as well. Bravo to all of you. And and I laugh. I had no intention of putting Thanks. all the AIs together. And guess what? I got so many freaking AIs in one room. And then of course we have two spirituals and. Uh, uh, it, it shows a couple of things. There's uh, there, there's there's the thought of the great all. Uh, where where one idea seems to travel and so many people can can think of this idea. And, and I'm getting that from all of you, that there are certain things out there that the audiences need to hear about. And we don't listen when, when we read it in the newspaper. We don't listen when we watch the news. We don't listen when we pick up a textbook. We listen when we think it has nothing to do with us and it takes place on a faraway planet somewhere. So thank you very much for sneaking in very powerful messages for us to hear and and we could pretend it has nothing to do with us until it sinks deeply into our brains. Uh, I wish you all the best of luck, ladies and gentlemen. As I say, you go to bostonsci-fi.com for schedules, for times, for admissions, for everything like that. Boston Sci-Fi is there in Boston at the Somerville Theater, but it is also online. So there are numerous films that you can watch from the comfort of your home. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. And, and, and here's to a successful festival.